So uh, for those of you who are uh, either residential or commercial customers and you're looking at uh, requirements that don't necessarily mandate installing LED lights, but they pretty much do mandate installing LED lights to meet the modern, uh, model energy codes, um, most LED lights, at least in commercial buildings, are not designed to be repairable. And so uh, if you buy an LED light from the um, hardware store or homeowner's uh, home center, uh, which I have done, and when you install the bulb in you know, the kind of bulbs that would go on older fixtures, just write the date on it to see how long it lasts. And what I'm finding, and I know my information is only anecdotal because it's just me at my house doing this, but uh, when they say a bulb is going to last five, six, seven years, ten years, whatever it lasts, uh, I'm finding that that's uh, uh, over, uh, they're over uh, selling what the bulb can do and that it's probably going to last a lot less. And so these, uh, as an example, LED troffers that you see uh, being sold and installed commonly in new offices, um, there is no facility for them to be repaired and uh, they're also trying hard not to give you any claims about how long they're going to last but if the bulbs are lasting five years or less and you're signing a lease for five years and you're installing LED lights then that to me means if you renew the lease and you're there for ten years you're probably going to end up replacing all the fixtures voluntarily because you're not getting light out of some of them and you want uniform light throughout your space, you don't want one to be a little different color than another, or you're going to move out into hopefully your business is a success and you go build your own office building or rent a bigger suite and move into that, then whoever moves in after you is probably going to throw those lights away. This is not the case in some Middle Eastern countries because there has been a patent created for light bulbs that have twice as many LEDs and so you're pushing far less power through uh, each LED. So in other words if there are these little strings of LED lights and let us say uh, there's ten of them in a standard bulb then in according to this new patented system they would put in twenty or thirty so pushing less power through them does make them last longer. So um, there's probably going to be a little bit of an inclination to hang back until those bulbs become available in the U.S. before implementing these standards on the commercial side. Otherwise you're going to be buying super energy efficient light fixtures that aren't going to last. And you're, the, the economics of building light fixtures and throwing them away um, are not going to work well for trying to save on energy overall. It's just extremely inefficient. And um, so uh, there's some problems with the system. And again, if you're signing a 10 year lease, then this will be a question that your architect or your electrical engineer should be asking you when you're picking light fixtures. Um, there's a way around it. Um, you can uh, put dimmers on your light fixture and uh, not run them at full throttle, which means you're pushing less power through each LED, which should make them last longer. Um, but uh, it's going to increase the first cost for the construction of your tenant improvement. And it's hard to say how much that will be because a lot of these things are really um, very, very individually different. So for instance, the cost of installing a light fixture for labor uh, in a trough or type ceiling is virtually the same no matter which trough or light fixture you pick. The electrician breaks it out of the box, he sets it in the trough, he connects a wire which they call a pigtail to it and then connects that to the main power system so that it will come on. And so his cost doesn't vary at all. It's the cost of the light fixture itself and then if you decide to go for a dimmer, which is my advice, um, I should say in the middle of this video, uh, hire an architect and get his uh, advice specifically, or engineers um, don't rely on this video to build from, but just to overview the situation. 
Um, so the, the cost of labor is the same. It's the cost of the fixture that's going to go up. And then um, it may be literally impossible to meet the energy code for some of the things that you used to do in the past. And so we have seen times when we were going from one kind of fluorescent light bulb to another kind of fluorescent light bulb to LED bulbs where people would say, oh, I want this to be very bright. I want to have some extra lights of this kind or that in there. And when we ran the calculations, the answer was, no, you don't meet the code if you do that. So you just can't do it. Um, so uh, trying to push a 40% improvement into the system all at once is going to take uh, a little bit more thinking than this uh, kind of press release from the International Code Council. But uh, I think everybody uh, should be aware of it and um, if you're building a tenant improvement as these codes are being implemented uh, your architect or engineer will know uh, when the code is being implemented and there might be some advantage to you to try to get your plan through permitting process while the prior code is still in place if you're only signing a five-year lease and you don't incur that first cost. Um, on the uh, air conditioning unit side, um, generally what happens is as the criteria become more rigorous for more efficient units, the less efficient units simply stop being manufactured and the um, price does not climb dramatically um, on the more efficient units because part of the reason why the more efficient units cost more is that the suppliers are not stocking them and everybody tends to go for the least efficient unit that meets the code again because of the first cost issue. So if they raise the floor on the least efficient unit that meets the code, yes it will cost more but it's not going to cost dramatically more. And um, so some of these things that are considered to be exotic, like the uh, type of air conditioning system that I mentioned for the house they decided not to build, um, those things are way beyond what uh, we're looking at here for uh, this improvement in efficiency. They can already do it. The equipment already exists. The problem is that the, the argument against it is that you have to wait to get it. They don't have it in stock when you go to get it repaired the repair people don't carry the parts for it on their truck it's considered exotic hardware and um, so when they raise the floor those kind of problems go away um, but all in all you still end up paying more so we won't really know how much more until we get there with the actual numbers of the equipment and things like that but um, the payback on it is likely to be out past that five-year window. How far out, um, I can't say. Um, last but not least, there's the issue of just insulating the building better. And uh, the payback on just insulating the building better is actually pretty good. Um, the problem is, again, the gross numbers. Um, I have a project that we're remodeling right now and the contractors, or I shouldn't say we're remodeling, we're the architect for the remodeling. The um, owner has decided to upgrade beyond the minimum insulation that the code requires and that's because the uh, cost increment of, of doubling the amount of building envelope insulation is not very much. Um, so they've got a masonry building, it's currently uninsulated they have to put studs up on the inside of the exterior walls um, to add any insulation at all and so uh, increasing the distance of the stud from the back side of the wall and increasing the dip depth of the fiberglass bat insulation is not doubling the cost of uh, the installation of insulation and um, so uh, the payback on doing that is pretty good However, if you already weren't going to insulate at all, say you had some kind of a system where uh, it, it is what it is, a two by six inch stud with bad insulation in between, and then you had to add uh, polyisocyanurate rigid insulation or something like that to the inside face or outside face of the wall, then you're adding another process, and for that, the uh, cost in increment is significant. So uh, depending on the 
uh, assembly that's there, if you're going into an existing building and remodeling it, or if you're building a new building, you may um, see a doubling of the cost of insulation depending on how you're doing it. And then again, relatively limited uh, uh, value on a five-year lease in terms of energy savings by doubling it. But um, overall, uh, whoever owns the building, whoever is occupying the building, the building will be there virtually forever. Um, then the uh, less amount of oil that the occupants are using, or electricity, or gas, or whatever heats and cools the building uh, over 30 years is dramatic. So, uh, what's the good and bad? Well, the, the good and bad of it is that uh, people who are designing a custom home, which of course is who you would refer to be the rich, um, they will uh, be more encouraged to design a custom design that's um, more um, user-friendly and less uh, wasteful of energy um, because they're going to have to pay for that anyway in going into a spec house. So it's a little bit more encouragement on uh, designing custom homes and um, a lot of middle class people design custom homes too but um, it's not something that happens on the uh, entry level houses and poor people's houses. And then um, so you're uh, probably going to end up having a way to include um, things like actually installing solar which wasn't considered before and it's going to be a greater encouragement to do some things that are uh, fairly worth considering like um, tubular skylights um, we suggest it a lot but not many people want to do it because it adds a lot of penetrations to a roof that probably already is an old roof and likely would cause leaking or having to re-roof the entire roof but um, doing that to try to uh, bring the energy cost down is uh, now becoming more highly encouraged by the system that we're looking at. And uh, definitely in a house, in my own 45-year-old house, I've installed quite a bit of many solar tube lights. And uh, the payback on them is really good because you just don't have to turn the lights on. Um, I also was the architect of uh, Jacob E. Manch uh, Elementary School's remodeling, and that's an elementary school that runs with the lights switched off, or at least it did the last time I was in there five or ten years ago, and it did on the day that it was uh, put in operation. So it's an old building which was partly recycled, and partly added on to, and given some super insulated walls and some very well insulated roofs. The school district thought that going from the old uh, facility to the new facility, it's about $20 million to build it, that they would recover that $20 million in energy savings, mm, I believe probably by now, so it's built about 05 or 0, and, and now it's 2021, so somewhere now or in the next five years they will have recovered their total investment in energy savings just for and there are a lot of other things achieved than energy savings on the school. The main reason for the remodeling was to help the kids and not to save on energy. That was just a side benefit. So, uh, what's the bottom line? Increased barrier to entry and uh, net savings in energy over the long haul. So, if you're going to be in any of these buildings you're building for 10 years, it'll be well worth it for you, but the, the barrier to entry issue is a big problem for a lot of small business and a lot of people who uh, want to build a custom home. So uh, will the banks now be financing new homes for 35 years instead of 30 years? I have no idea. Uh, tenant improvements, generally speaking, finance for the five years of the lease to the absolute maximum and really the landlord would just prefer that you pay straight out of pocket for your own tenant improvement. Maybe they'll give you a little bit of money, $20, $30 a square foot, but um, there's no real uh, possibility of uh, financing these additional costs out over many years. It just costs that much more to build your new facility. So 
Um, with that said, I hope you'll take a look at our um, video that talks about how to do the energy calculations on a commercial building. I'll link this video to that one. And then uh, if you're interested in the thing about the uh, light bulbs, uh, the person I learned from about this is uh, BigClive.com and uh, I'll connect a link to his video too. Very interesting guy, uh, takes stuff apart like these light bulbs and shows how it works. And um, So I hope that uh, technology is going to come to uh, the Las Vegas area uh, in the near future. Uh, most of those kind of patents last about 15 years and so uh, I don't know how long that's been out but it's out now so uh, sometime in the next 15 years we'll assume those patents expire and then all the light bulb manufacturers or all the light fixture manufacturers will be uh, selling uh, bulbs competing with that and um, in the meantime think seriously about putting dimmers on your LED light fixtures that do not have repairability. In other words, if they don't have a screw in and screw out light bulb, then right now there's a potential for a cottage industry to fix them, but there is actually no way to fix them. And the repair when the light goes out is throw it away, stick a new one in, and then you've paid to construct a new light fixture. So uh, my name is Ken Small. I'm with SSA Architecture. We're at 7040 Laredo Street in Las Vegas, Nevada, 702-873-1718. Uh, and uh, we can also put a link down below to the uh, news release from the International Code Council so that you can go there and read more about it. Uh, I'm an architect in Las Vegas, Nevada. We also do work in Arizona and California, and I'm also licensed in Texas. If there's anything we can do to help you, we'd love to do it. Um, we're currently not accepting uh, residential projects for anything under 8,000 square feet, so most of our work is business-to-business -business architecture. If that's what you need, please give us a call. The initial consultation for commercial projects is always free in our office. Thanks a lot and have a great day. Please like and subscribe. Down below, like and subscribe, please. Thanks.